The spirited monthly newspaper, The World's Advanced Thought, was a monthly periodical founded by Lucy A. Mallory in 1886. The paper's motto was, Love is the way, the truth and the life. Mrs. Lucy Mallory contributed her own spiritual writings as well as the inspired contributions of others. She served as writer, editor and publisher of the paper, which had an international readership that included renowned Russian author and vegetarian Leo Tolstoy. Through this uplifting publication, Lucy Mallory highlighted themes that emphasized the inner light of the human being. She also advocated vegetarianism for its loving kindness to other beings. Throughout her life, Lucy Mallory also acted on her humanitarian beliefs. She used her own funds, for example, to open a school for children of color so that they could receive an education. She was also an animal rights activist and a vegetarian advocate who hosted meetings of the local vegetarian society in her newspaper's office. She once said, Vegetarianism is becoming worldwide. We are not speaking of forced vegetarianism. That doesn't count. We are speaking of vegetarians who have adopted the humane diet because of a sense of justice to animals. And also, the animal is not soulless. It has the seeds of all human principles. Through the lower forms of life, these seeds are dormant. Every human principle is there, but unborn, save the vital, the astral and the instrumental. We now share with you selections from the periodical The World's Advanced Thought. Build it large. If thou would make thy thought, O man, the home where angel minds may inhabit, build it large, make its vast roof translucent to the skies, and let the upper glory dawn thereon, till morn and evening, circling round, shall drop their jeweled plumes of sun flame and of stars. Build thou that home upon a mountain top, where all the free winds shall have space to blow. Open its casements to the east and west, to north and south, to heaven and earth. Let all sweet flowers bloom in its green retreats. Let every wild bird find sweet welcome there, and everything that shares the breathing joy of universal air and earth be free of thy well-ordered empire and inlay. With precious gems, with diamond and white pearl, and red ruby and green emerald, the sumptuous pavement till it shines afar. Like the apocalyptic shrine whose walls of massive light from earth and sun received, all varying lustres and diffused their beams. Fresco its inner halls with all that art, ever pictured of the beautiful, but still let nature freely come to see that art, hath rightly drawn her perfect loveliness. Fill the grand halls with statues of old time. Let gods and demigods range with goddesses and graces. Let the saints and seers and sages and the valiant throng of modern heroes and the ever young and ever tuneful poets of all climes and hierophants of all religions have their place among them, some in silver carved, each symbolizing that interior truth or outward use they lived, taught, acted, sung, or sought to live, or act, or sing, that humans, fired by that pure ideal, might become gods and the earth a newborn paradise. Soul Communion. Involved in soul communion is the essence of right living. And when one enters understandingly in the soul communion observance, he will be free from all the fetters of life, sickness, pains, disappointments, and all kinds of disharmonies. For in the sphere of our unconscious being, there is a united power of life force that is seeking constantly for betterment in this outward sphere of conscious existence, in ourselves and in the united. Concentrated bearing of the better forces of this outward sphere 
which will help to open the avenue to the sphere of central being and enable this yearning life to make an expression of its power in our outward experience. The sun of our solar system is a constant fountain of life and light to the planetary worlds where alone clouds and night shadows obstruct. So too, the life of the soul center is beclouded in our sphere of consciousness, awaiting our illumination where there shall be no night. In all soul communion observances, there should be a vital sympathy with everything in the sphere of existence. Soul communion is the unabridged fountain of wisdom, and those who enter this sanctuary of life will be blessed with that which unfolds the immortal consciousness, where death is unknown. If the peoples of all the nations would unite in observing soul communion, universal peace would be established in the being of all and in the world consciousness. Key Thoughts Everything is moving Godward. We get according to our capacity to receive. The spirit of love leads directly to heaven. No one can attain greatness who is waiting for an elevator. Knowledge is of little good until it is digested and assimilated or organized and incorporated as a part of our understanding. Whenever you enter a room, be sure to leave your blessing with it when you go out. When one is wise, it does not take many words to express understandingly what he has to tell. There is no poverty worse than ignorance, no wealth more valuable than wisdom, no madness worse than conceit. The observance of kindness to animals is the greatest movement for the progress of the whole world. Everything, animate, and that which we call inanimate, has life force. This is why we are attracted to some things and persons and not to others. Discovery is but growth and expansion, the attainment of things that already exist, but to whose plane we must develop before we can see them. There is nothing good or glorious which war has brought forth in human nature, which peace does not produce more richly and permanently. A cyclone is a living, destructive entity, called into being by the destructive thought forces of society, and is as blind in its fury as are those thoughts sent out from the minds of society's members. If you will make today a happy day, you will never be unhappy. For we cannot get back into the past and we cannot go forward into the future. Today is all we can have in which to build or tear down. Teach your children humane principles first, last and all the time. And you will have good children who will be blessings to you all through life. This is of first importance in the child's education and is vastly superior in its good results to all other forms of education. Habit is a slave driver. Thoughts are continually materializing. Everything is lovely when we are loving. You must be a good finder before you can have the joy of life. Conscious, individualized life is the aim of everything from the grain of sand up to God. Real kindness cuts out of its life everything that encourages cruelty to any form of life. Spirit communication is a fount of golden suggestions. To the aspiring and thoughtful, they are a treasury of infinite possibilities and value. God is the unselfish, altruistic, wise and loving, constructive principle in humanity. The devil is the ignorant, selfish, hateful, vicious, destructive lack of principle in humanity. Why is it that in all doctrines of religion, that while God is way off in the skies and heaven is way off in the future, the devil and evil spirits are very close by and Hades could not be any nearer than it is. The individual is weak until he is self-harmonized. 
When he has cultivated this state of being until he controls himself to remain harmonious under all circumstances, then he is strong in divine power. There are lots of theoretical reformers in the world, those who can tell the others how to do, but who are perfect failures so far as setting a practical example goes. The world seldom follows the advice of theorists. Real life is the realization of spirit cooperation. It is like the cooperation of the two eyes. The sight of the single eye is doubled. Those who deny the spirit go through life like one with one side of the body paralyzed. Truth is the nourishing food of the spirit, as material food is the nourishment of the physical body. But truth that remains undigested in the mind creates mental torment. Truth, when lived digested, is a cure-all for all woes and ills. The best work you can do in physical life is to make yourself broad enough so that the infinite universe, the power of God, can pour out its endless riches through you. And the broadening process is accomplished by fulfilling the law of love toward every living form. Grateful viewers, thank you for your company for today's selections from The World's Advanced Thought, a periodical by Lucy A. Mallory, Vegetarian, Evolution of Life, Part 1 of 2, on Words of Wisdom.